1942. Southern Democrats did not like the liberal New Deal programs, and from 1938 they worked with Republicans in Congress to stop additional programs and curtail existing ones. By 1942, workers' and farmers' incomes were going up, and these groups were more willing to listen to Republican attacks on the New Deal as creeping socialism. During the 1942 election campaign, Republicans went after Eleanor Roosevelt and FDR decided not to actively participate in the off-year elections because of his role as commander-in-chief. Rationing annoyed voters, as did FDR's request for an increase in taxes to pay for the war. Congress passed the payroll tax in the fall of 1942, and it had a greater impact on industrial workers than the income tax. Normally, Democratic voters stayed home in 1942 in protest against the payroll tax and rationing. In 1942, the Democratic vote went down, while the Republican vote remained about the same as in 1938 off-year elections. While the Democrats retained control of both houses of Congress, Republicans picked up 44 seats in the House and 9 in the Senate. Republicans won a number of governorships, and the victory of Thomas Dewey in New York ending 20 years of Democratic control especially angered FDR. In 1942, Democrats were hurt by the large number of men in uniform, since most states did not allow them to vote. The migration of people looking for war-related work also hurt Democrats. While the U.S. won a number of major naval victories at Coral Sea and Midway in 1942. The victories on land in North Africa did not come until after the elections. Gloom about the war alienated voters. The 1942 Congress was the most conservative since 1928 and cut a number of New Deal programs like the CCC, Federal Theater Project, U.S. Film Service, WPA, etc and cut the budgets of a number of other New Deal agencies, like the Farm Security Administration. Because the Republicans did well in the states running from Ohio to Colorado, Congressional Republicans in alliance with Southern Democrats interpreted the 1942 off-year elections as a mandate to roll back the New Deal. 1944 FDR did not expect to run again in 1944, and many of his family members wanted him to retire because of his growing health problems. However, he wanted to get out the Democratic vote for 1944 and make up for the losses of 1942. In 1943, FDR put together a proposal that would reward veterans with generous unemployment, social security, and educational benefits. Although Republicans and Southern Democrats resented it, they could not block it in an election year, FDR's proposal. 1944 Servicemen's Readjustment Act, better known as the GI Bill, one of the major pieces of social reform legislation in the 20th century that expanded the middle class to include many of the World War II veterans. Republicans were not happy with an FDR proposal to allow servicemen to vote because they feared men in uniform would vote for the president. In the end, they compromised and left it up to the states. 20 of the 48 states sent out ballots to servicemen, so 4 million of the 9 million men in uniform in 1944 were able to vote in the presidential and congressional elections. Leading Republican contenders in 1944 were Senator Robert Taft of Ohio, a conservative, Governor Thomas Dewey of New York, a moderate, 1940 candidate Wendell Wilkie, who shifted to the left, alienating the Republican establishment with his support for liberal internationalism, Governor Harold Stassen of Minnesota, and General Douglas MacArthur. Several other Republican senators and congressmen wanted the 1944 nomination, but Dewey did well in the primaries, especially in Wisconsin. Republicans nominated Dewey, and the Democrats picked FDR to run for a fourth term. Democratic Party leaders demanded that FDR drop Vice President Henry Wallace from the ticket. Initially, the president remained above the fray, but met with party leaders in July of 1944. 
FDR left it to the convention to second the choice of Senator Harry Truman of Missouri. He was the compromise candidate, a border state liberal who appeased Southern Demo Democrats and Northern Urban Party bosses. During the campaign, Dewey represented moderate social activism and support for post-war international cooperation, abandoning his isolationist stance from 1940. Both parties decided not to emphasize foreign policy issues in the 1944 election, with FDR campaigning on victory and security. He called for a special relationship with the English, restoring the international status quo pre-1933 and a weakened Germany to prevent another world war. Republicans did not offer an alternate vision. President Roosevelt did not promise any grand visions of the post-war world, avoiding the rhetoric of President Wilson's. FDR endorsed the United Nations as a replacement for the League of Nations. During the campaign, Dewey proved unable to reach voters, and his stiff manner compared unfavorably with the easy manner and experience of the president. FDR aggressively defended the New Deal and social reform, while Dewey denounced the extravagance of New Deal spending and the failure to solve the unemployment problem. Although in ill health, the president bounced back in September 1944 radio broadcast considered a masterpiece of political sarcasm, aimed at the Republicans, including his mock resentment for their attacks on his dog, Fala. He won 25 million votes to 22 million for Dewey, and the Democrats picked up 22 seats in the House, negating the losses of 1942.